Begin by using the procedure detailed earlier to release all pressure from the fuel system. Once the system has been depressurized, disconnect the fuel feed line and fuel return line from the fuel rail. Next, install the fuel line shutoff adapters at the open connections. When the adapters are securely fastened, make sure they're both open. If the negative battery cable was disconnected earlier, reconnect it. Turn the ignition back on. Use the procedure explained earlier to purge all of the air from the fuel system. Next, close off the discharge hose, energize the pump, and wait for the fuel pressure to build. Once the pressure reaches its maximum, close off the fuel supply line. If the pressure holds, then you've isolated the problem at either the fuel pump pulse damper or the fuel pump itself. Both are located at the fuel sender assembly in the fuel tank. Inspect the pulse damper first. If there is no sign of leaks, go ahead and replace the pump. If pressure drops with the fuel supply line closed, open the fuel supply line and again use the scan tool to pressurize the system. Once the system reaches its maximum pressure, close the adapter on the fuel return line. If the pressure holds, then the fuel pressure regulator is at fault, so go ahead and replace it. If the pressure drops with the return line adapter closed, then locate and replace any leaking fuel injectors. Your know-how reference manual explains how to check for leaking injectors. If the fuel pressure test indicates a low pressure reading from the outset, perform the fuel pressure relief procedure explained earlier. Disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel rail and install the fuel line shutoff adapter between the open connections. Once the shutoff adapter is installed, make certain the shutoff adapter is in the open position. Turn the ignition back on and again bleed all air from the system. Once the air is removed, close off the bleeder hose. What I'm going to do is close the fuel line shutoff adapter, energize the pump, observe the fuel pressure gauge, and as soon as I see the pressure rise within normal operating specifications, I'm going to crack open the fuel return line to ease the pressure within the system. Don't let the fuel pressure climb beyond 65 PSI or you'll damage the fuel system components. If the fuel pressure rose to within specifications, it proves that the fuel pump is capable of meeting the system's needs. In this case, replacing the fuel pressure regulator should solve the problem. If the pressure still did not rise to meet specifications, remove the fuel sender assembly and begin looking for the potential problems explained earlier in the program. The final possibility is that the fuel pressure test indicates fuel pressure that exceeds the maximum allowable system pressure. If this is the case, the vehicle may suffer from drivability problems related to a rich condition. Typical symptoms might include hard starting followed by black exhaust smoke, strong sulfur smell from the exhaust, and possibly diagnostic trouble codes P0132 or P0172. If the pressure is excessive, begin your diagnosis by performing the fuel system pressure relief procedure detailed earlier in this program. Once the fuel pressure is relieved, disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel rail and insert the open end of the flexible hose into an appropriate fuel container. Next, use the scan tool to energize the pump and observe the pressure readings. If the readings are now okay, it means there's a restriction somewhere in the fuel return line. If the readings are still above specifications, inspect the fuel rail outlet passage for a restriction. If the fuel rail outlet passage looks okay, remove the fuel pressure regulator and inspect its filter screen for a restriction. If the screen is clogged, simply remove and discard it. 
Its only purpose was to filter impurities left over from the assembly process. If the screen looks okay, install a new fuel pressure regulator. Oh, and one quick note before I leave you. A few months ago, you received KnowHow 198, Drivability Concerns and Diagnosis. In there, I demonstrated how to do a ground credibility test. It's an important test, but I was hurrying and got careless and probed with a DVOM lead directly into the Metropac connector of the throttle position sensor. This is wrong and damages the connector. When the Park Avenue I was working on set a TPS code and developed an erratic idle, I should have known right away of my mistake. So, let's review the procedure again. Begin by disconnecting the sensor. Then, select the appropriate adapter and connect it to the TPS Metropack connector. Now, connect the red lead from the DVOM to the TPS ground terminal. It's the black wire on this sensor, but be sure to check the wiring diagram for the car and sensors you're working on. Connect the black lead from the DVOM to the negative battery terminal. Set the DVOM to the millivolt setting and turn the ignition key on, but don't start the vehicle. The final step is to load the PCM circuit to test the integrity of the ground. On 95 and older vehicles, jumper DLC terminals A or B to a ground terminal, or you can use a scan tool to put the vehicle in field service mode. On newer vehicles with a 16-pin connector, you can't jumper the DLC terminals, and there isn't a field service mode. Still, the circuit needs to be loaded before doing the test. This can be done by cycling an output device. Something like the cooling fans using the Tech 2. After turning the Tech 2 on, enter FO for diagnostics, the vehicle year, and passenger car. FO for powertrain. Now the Tech 2 asks for engine type. VIN K, 3.8 liter V6. Car product line, C car and whether the car has traction control. Yes. The application menu appears. Select F2 for special functions. FO for engine output control. And then FO again for fan relays. You'll then be given a choice between fan 1 or fan 2. Select either one, it doesn't matter. Now, you can cycle the cooling fan on and off, effectively loading the PCM circuits. With the DVOM, you should see a reading of 50 millivolts or less. If the reading is above 50 millivolts, the most likely cause is a loose or damaged ground. Folks, we're sorry about the mistakes. We'll definitely try and keep them out of future programs. We hope this program has given you some helpful insights, and we look forward to hearing from you. We do our best to tailor each program to satisfy your requests, so definitely let us know what information you want us to explore. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next Buick Know How.